And I think what you're saying too, Michael, and you having that community connection and being out there with folks, you know, and connecting on a very, a very personal level. I think that's really so valuable and so important that, you know, you have a heart of gold and you're just, you can take those big arms of yours and just wrap them around people. (laughs) and, and, And that's amazing. That. I mean, it makes me feel good. Every time I see you, I'm like, I want a hug. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, I know that working with Steve and the kids up at, uh, the special kids up at uh, at, uh, Cyprus, and and just being around that energy of a guy who was in the Marine Corps who exudes compassion like your husband does, they they are warrior healers. They are warrior healers. And, and you're making a really, really good point here. And it's something I don't want to forget. So I'm going to, I'm going to take you to an instance where I was talking to some George Washington, you know, I was invited to George Washington university to speak to uh, the med students there about some things regarding veterans issues. And what you just tapped into is super important is veterans to veterans, peer to peer, makes such a difference. So when you have somebody potentially at your dental office who is who may be a veteran like Steve, like yourself, Michael, like you know, somebody like you, Tim, who has worked with veterans who understands veterans issues, that's gonna be a real connection for folks. Veterans naturally and organically, when you say, Oh, I was a veteran, I'm a veteran, boom, there's a connection. There's an automatic connection. It's so important. Number one. Number two, when you see somebody either on the street, you're, you know, you're doing a talk, you're out there. One of the things that even these students, when I was talking to them, I said, what is one of the most important things you want to ask people when you're seeing them? You know, especially when you're considering somebody who might be a veteran. Are you a veteran? Are you a veteran? (laughs) I mean, we forget to ask the simplest of questions sometimes. Are you a veteran? Right. And that is the simplest question. And then and then from there, you know, we we as clinicians, we as empaths, we as, you know, working with people, we want to recognize certain things, of course, you know, like sadness, issues related to family, uh, family separation, you know, all these things that could potentially impact somebody's emotional well-being. So and and their and their dental and medical health. So that's really important. So we have to look at all these factors. Well, you know, your book is, I love your book. Oh. The, yes. Wait, I mean, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you mean the book, Fuck Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting real with strong language? Is your teaching <laughs> understanding your personal beliefs? <laughs> that is good. That's good. That's awesome. Yes. Yes, but. What I love about that book is it's a, you know, there's a pretentiousness to religiosity. There's a pretentiousness sometimes to spirituality, and there's a judgment to it. And when you're using the language that people use on the street as a, as a probation parole officer, as a person on the streets, as a person who deals with veterans, as a person who deals with uh, folks in hospice, and children and gang members, that language is understood. I'm not saying it's it's the proper role modeling, but what I'm saying is it what Summer is saying is don't be judgmental. Don't look at things and assume things not in evidence emotionally, intelligence wise, that this person doesn't have it together because they're emoting in this way. And 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 sometimes it's a way to alleviate the uh, the toxicity in our systems. Am I right, Summer? You are, Michael. And I also, you know, this book was really to understand. It was written because, and I love what you just said, by the way. I absolutely love what you just said. And thank you, thank you for for actually writing in this book and writing your feelings about the book. That was really thoughtful. So thank you for that. So. You absolutely made, <laughs> you made uh, a good point. Um, 
But this book is, to me, it's about understanding your personal beliefs and values. We use the idea of strong language because it is, it is a sensitive issue to pose against your personal values. And then we give you strategy based on the using of strong language. We don't put impose uh, subjectivity to in regards to it's foul, it's bad, it's this. We actually have you go through strategy about how did it feel to use your first language, uh, strong language word? What were you told? Were you told that it was bad? Who taught you, you know, to use your strong language words? So, and then how does that, how does that feel when you do use those words? So we give you strategy and then you can take that strategy and apply it to other areas of your life in regards to your personal beliefs and values. So yes, that book was written for a reason and it was written specifically to catch your attention because we want you to understand what your, your values are what your beliefs are. So, and, and we're all raised with certain beliefs and values, be it from, you know, our school teachers, our parents, our clergy, those people that we, that are around us every day. And do we align, although we were taught these things, does that align with the life that we're living? And to me, we want to live a life that we're, you know, that is authentic, so to speak. Authentic, yeah. Yeah. Huh? So, authentic. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That aligns with what you truly believe. We want you to, to walk the talk. We don't want you to just talk and then be like, oh, I don't believe what I'm walking. So I, uh, I just I just want to say that Steve and your husband, I know, do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. For, for, for what it's worth, Summer, uh, it's uh, that word is in my armamentarium uh, daily, <laughs> <laughs> if not hourly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just, I just want to say that I've personally yelled it out twelve times this morning. <laughs> and you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing and is by myself. <laughs> and, and what's funny? My husband rarely uses that. Language. At least wow. not in front of me. He, he rarely uses strong language. So, but did he work with Steve? <laughs> <laughs> But I rarely hear him use that language. I I know I use it more. And it was just because I was raised with a grandfather around me. He was a very strong man. He ran his own business. He was an entrepreneur. My mom was raised by him. So when we said the word fuck, we meant the word fuck. I mean, it's like, come on. And, you know? <laughs> well, it, it gets the point across. Yeah. It, and I love this about it. We talk about it in literature. We talk about it how you hear it in movies. We talk about yep. it how you hear it from comedians. And yet, if you don't want to use that language, that's okay. But are you aligning your life? Are you aligning your life in a way that you're, it's not in your, in your life? You know? And also, as going back to what Michael said, just because people use it, it doesn't make them bad or wrong or dumb or whatever. It just doesn't. You know, we all live our lives and our journeys in a different way, but understanding there is a, we are human. So there are certain things that we do have in common. And so when we touch back to what you're doing and meeting the needs emotionally and physically of human beings, there are some common themes. You know, we do all have feelings. We do all want to express and, and we do want to talk to somebody. And so you're giving and providing a platform for that to happen you're providing a platform to care for another human being. And I think that's the thread here is that we all care about human beings and we care about veterans issues. So again, I want to thank everybody here for, for caring a, and doing something, putting action behind, not just sitting there and thinking, Oh, I could do this, but we're actually putting action behind what, what matters and what we care about. Fuck yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, I always, I always thought of sometimes when I was in prison cells with guys or jail cells with young men or women and they were using the language, it was a, a way of draining their woundedness. It was a way of, of getting the toxicity out. They had to use words because they were in a prison cell. Yeah. To tell that. And you know, Steve worked in corrections. He understands that. And, you know, when you're, when you're using that language, you know, sometimes I don't want to sit and judge them as being anything other than authentic and real and sincere in, in those words that they can use to express. Some of them suffered trauma 
unspeakable. Yep. Yep. And it's okay to respect that, whether that happened in early childhood or during a war or during their military years where they saw so much traumatic stuff that they need to express themselves. First things, I, I love the line by Mother Teresa, if you judge people, you'll never have uh, time to learn to love them and heal them. Yeah. Well, anyway. well uh, go ahead, Summer. Oh, thank you, Dr. Tim. So one of the things that we learned way back when I was going to school for my master's degree, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, Adlerian and Adler said, sometimes you just need to meet the client at their level. And that means maybe in language, that means yep. children when they're talking about an experience that is right. happening to them in their lives, because you're more relatable. They feel like you're understood. They embrace that better and then they'll open up. So sometimes you just have to meet the person client, whatever, at their level. And that means sometimes using that language and, and then they don't feel so judged. It, it's, it's okay, you know, and we have to be okay with, with understanding that we have to connect with humans. More than anything, we need a connection to understand what their lived experience is. You're such a great college professor. You oh. are a great teacher to me. No, it's true. You are. You're a great yeah. I've learned yep. more than I've learned in years. Just yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah, amazing. And I like I like the I like that you use the term authentic. I think we've um, you know, have we lost that? Is that what we're trying to recapture? Um, you know, it's one of the questions that's on my mind and uh we need to get back to authenticity and and uh and what it, you know, again, how do we how do we help people get through this? How do we what are we doing with our time or, or you know, and so you can tell a lot about a man where he's been if he's, you know, he steps in a five-gallon bucket of paint and watch where his steps go. And, uh, you know, but where have our steps been? What have we been doing? Where are we going? Right. So I think these are important times to ask that. And, and um, moving forward, I think it's important to be authentic. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that times are going to change. Like, this is going to change change yes. the way we, we yeah. function as human beings. And there is going to be somewhat of a fear getting back out in community. And so yeah. where do we go? And what do we do as prevent preventative measures? What preventative measures should we start planning for now in relation to really help support people? Because the best thing we can do right now is quarantine, right? So we're protecting those who work in the medical field, those who work, have to work in community to help support us. Grocery store clerks, you know, our medical professionals, those people who are cleaning the hospitals and the clinics, those people who are doing admin work at the hospitals and clinics because they have to support the medical staff. So they're people that are essential to be out there right now. But right now we're quarantining. And so does this cause a little bit of, you know, not just being stir crazy, but more alongs of the lines of, are we creating somebody who's going to be fearful, people who are going to be fearful to take a step back out into community and what that's going to look like. So where do we start now creating some preventative measures to really start helping people take those steps to get back out, to really reduce trauma, long-term trauma. And these are really, really important things that I'm thinking about a lot right now. It's like, how do I help? How in little ways do I put out little videos? So the way that I'm doing it is I'm putting out videos every week with a tip about, you know, how we can cope, how to help our emotional well-being, how to, you know, just to reduce some of this angst to help people come to, you know, a level where they can help, you know, really help you know, focus and be centered emotionally. So let's think about ways that you based on your specialty or based on what you want to do you can help community in a positive way you know i i speak to kids all the time and one of the lines i used i was with uh, susan williams uh at the school and uh she's robin williams widow and when we were together uh i told the kids at that elementary school where she went be the medicine for a better world mm. Yeah. Be that medicine for other people. Make a constant and compassionate choice 
to be the healing in other people's lives, to be the community unity, to be the connection, like Tim does with the guys up there and his own patients. When you hear him, he's talking about it, they're family to you. Same with Steve, with the kids that he teaches how to film stuff uh, uh, with uh, at Cypress School. And the same with you, with the wives that you deal with. Every one of us has to decide right now to be the vaccine and the inoculation as we go forward to carry on to be the emotional well-being medicine before the other things, the other medicines come. Because we can choose to do that emotionally and, and, and spiritually in our own way, just out of kind acts and compassionate acts to be that person that is that person who uplifts and encourages others. True. Thank you for joining us in the barracks. To learn more about our hosts, guests, and how to support VETS Mobile Dental Unit, visit www.inthebarracks.org.